See, I would do my job if I got you all so in action that you were on stage next year. Right? That's right, because your doubts are creating mountains. The reason why I'm here is I'm going to show you how to move them. We're going to cover a couple things here. The title of the talk was Break the Habit of Self-Doubt and Rock Confidence. So what we're going to talk about is confidence. What is it? Because a lot of us don't understand it. I know I didn't understand it. I had not the real confidence. I had the fake kind. You know, the really bossy, annoying kind, where it was really driven by insecurity. What we want to talk about is real confidence. The other thing we're going to talk about is the habit of self-doubt. The habit of self-doubt. So believe it or not, self-doubt is a habit. It's a behavior, a thinking pattern that you repeat over and over and then it becomes automated. And when I can get you to understand that anxiety, worry, procrastination, self-doubt, they are all habits, then I can show you using science how you can break them. And then everything changes and it all comes back to these five second decisions. If you had more confidence, how would your business and life change for the better? I'm going to tell you how mine had when I finally learned what confidence is and what it isn't. Number one, I know how to say no. How many of you have a hard time saying no? You have clients you can't stand. You have people that work for you that drain you. Uh, the ability to align your goals with values and actions. Fearless negotiator. Fearless. Greater self-control. By the way, let me stop there for a second because I believe that in today's world, this is the number one skill for you. Self-control. And we're going to give you tools today that are going to give it to you. You're going to make a lot more money and you're going to be a happier human being. Absolutely. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We can talk about change all you want, but I'm the kind of person that's about real advice for real people. And that's going to require some real action. So as I'm talking, I want you to notice what are the physical sensations, the feelings that come up in your body. When I ask you, how would your life change if you had more confidence and you have an answer, do you feel yourself shrinking? Do you feel yourself talking yourself out or raising your hand? Because if I can get you to start to isolate that pattern and that habit, simply in how you respond to whether or not you're going to answer this question, if I can break that right there so that you learn to try, then you can bring that anywhere. I'm into experiential learning because, you know, I've got dyslexia, I'm ADD. It's really hard for me to read and retain. So if I feel it, if I have to do it, then it sticks. So let's talk about the myths and the truths about confidence. Okay, number one, confidence is a personality trait. Total baloney. Total baloney. Lots of extroverted people that are really bossy and annoying like I used to be, although I might still be a little annoying, um, but really insecure, really insecure. There's a lot of introverted folks that feel uncomfortable putting themselves out there, but they're, they, they really believe in what they're saying. So confidence is not a personality trait. Confidence is fixed. That's not true. You could be the most confident person in the world and the person that you love leaves you. That's going to rock confidence. You could be a really great business person and then make a really bad decision and blow it all. That's going to rock you. Number three, the confidence starts with belief. This is where I go against so many other people. I actually believe that this is not true. I think that thinking positive thoughts will certainly make you feel better in the moment, but it's not going to create change that you want. That you can be a negative, frustrated, depressed, anxiety-ridden son of a gun. And you can still take action.